kiss that frog, turn him into a prince. Our whole culture has been Disney-fied. I think Disney has been the, the greatest propaganda machine to turn the sexes against one another. Women manipulate men, and men are easily manipulated. So you get a bunch of little girls walking around in princess gowns, kiss a frog. That means the man is an ugly, wet, slimy beast. Not even fit to be a beast, a frog, right? Not, not even mammal, fucking frog. And the kiss, the sweet sugar and spice kiss, caress, and love of a woman will turn him into a prince. I mean, if you think a little deeper, that just it just sounds retarded because How's he gonna learn how to be a prince when he was a frog? Is the woman gonna teach him how to be a prince? You're gonna kiss this ugly frog and he's gonna become exactly the kind of man you want. I can tell you right now, women don't know what kind of man they are. Men gotta show them. <laughs> They're instinctual. It goes by instinct, not logic. But I, what is that word when you, when you get off track? I, uh, I digress, I digress, I digress quite a bit. So we're gonna get back on track here. And uh, I'm going to assert that it's not true. Women are not, girls are not sugar and spice and everything nice. They poop, they bleed, they fuck, they stink. They do all the things men do. There are puppy dog tails there as well. So a little bit about my experience uh, growing up with mostly boys. I grew up, you know, the oldest of uh, three boys. And my, my sister was the youngest. And uh, it was tough for her because she grew up around all boys. And she was the youngest girl. And, um, and so she's a tough girl. So she was like one of, she was like one of the guys. I think it was challenging for her. But, uh, you know, in the neighborhood, I was the oldest boy, strongest boy. When it was time to pick teams for phys ed, I was always the captain, captain of the football team. So I like to think of myself, especially when I was growing up, as king of the boys. And as a result, didn't have much experience with women except for mommy, my auntie, and school teachers. And so the authority, the major authority for most men, most American men, most Western men are not fathers. They're not men. They're mommy and school teachers because we spend the majority of our time either at home with mommy. Right. And for me, it was my auntie also uh, because daddy's at work or daddy's not in the home or daddy's in jail or daddy, 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 daddy's not there. People say we live in a patriarchy, but I think it's a matriarchy. I, I'm very convinced we live in a matriarchy. Um, so we've got influence from mommy and then you go to school and something like 90% of school teachers are women. So this creates this, at least a sense in myself growing up and I recognized it in me of being addicted to the approval of women at an early age. Because, uh, you know, if they're your authorities, they're going to tell you how to be. And if you're not being that way, then you're a bad boy. And when you got women telling you how to be a good boy, they're, they're using the female measuring stick. They're using what makes a good girl the measuring stick for a boy. In traditions past, I tend to be nostalgic about that. Who knows what the hell happened in the past? But the way it's presented, in traditions in the past, men were, young little boys were groomed, trained, and taught how to be men by men. Go figure. But we've got the we've got the matriarchy and we got the media telling it, telling men how to be men. And that's why we're so fucking confused in so many different ways. And a big part of the a big part of the, the confusion comes from this needing. Approval, approval from women, it starts with older women and then uh, and then it begins to creep into the realm of dating and dealing with young women. And so just to kind of go along my story a little bit and uh, how I got lost in this regard, um, I remember, and, and, and even well into my adulthood, seeking the validation and approval of women for no reason too. It wasn't even like, you know, seeking it for sex. It was like, oh, this is a woman. I ought to be a good boy or, um, you know, whatever, whatever uh, uh, man up phrases they use. To, to that which really mean be a good little girl with a penis and so looking for validation from a wimp from women it's a bad place to be we'll talk about it why school mother media and then i i have to i have to share that i became sexual at a very young age around the age of 13 and uh and i became addicted to the attention of little girls 
here I am, king of the hill, boys. You know, I dominated on the football field, leader of the boys. But the minute a girl came around, I melted and I got giddy and I got weird. I remember myself. I remember myself in like seventh and eighth grade uh, being head over heels and, and like girl after girl after girl. 31 flavors. It was like uh, I had a new crush every week and I became very ungrounded. I was a kid. You know, I didn't know any better. But not only needing the approval, but also now needing the feels. Ooh, ooh, the emotion associated with it, right? Getting boners, too, as a kid. And so um, at a very early age, that, that, that neediness, it goes from, it goes from this, uh, this needing of approval because, you know, you want to be a good boy to this needing of approval for, oh, maybe she'll kiss me. Oh, maybe she'll touch me. Oh, daydreams, night dreams, fantasies about girls being sugar and spice and all that nice stuff. And so um, for a lot of young men, and, and, and I'm admitting for myself included, especially very early on when you start becoming sexual, uh, all of your masculine grounding begins to crumble. And then it goes from needing approval to needing sex, needing the neediness, wanting, sensuality, sensuality. Addiction to sensuality is a big, part, a big issue in our culture. And men, we get trapped because it starts with, it starts with sex, right? And, uh, and if you don't have that self-possession, which I think is super critical for young men to learn, that's why I believe that promiscuity in young men is not a good idea. We'll talk to Rolo. Oh, my guest, I just let the cat out of the bag. It's this book right here. Those of you who know, you'll see. Um, you know, uh, he may have some different ideas about that. Of course, other people have different ideas about that. But I don't think promiscuity in young men is a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea to be out there jizzing and juking and putting your junk inside all these women. Because uh, among other things is easy manipulation. Because what we think is love is lust. And, uh, and it's very sensual. It's very physical emotion, emotion and sensuality. And uh, just like addiction to crack, you, there's a physical dependence. And so you, there are all kinds of uh, demons begin to arise, jealousy and fear, these kinds of things. So uh, becoming very sexual at an early age, um, I'm not going to go too much into my story with my wife, but I am very grateful that, uh, that I met the woman that I would spend the rest of my life with uh, at that early age. I became addicted to her. <laughs> but then my promiscuity and tendency for promiscuity began to decline. I, I no longer was uh, seeking validation or sex from a lot of women because well, my needs were met. And um, yeah, that's neither here nor there. I'm not advocating for that, but I think there's a lot of benefit in my being with one woman for all these years. Saved me a whole lot of uh, confusion and pain that I see young men going through.